Hi guys, I'm Jared, and today we're talking about what's new in board gaming as of February 17th, 2023. I'll be covering the latest news, announcements, most played games, hot new Kickstarters and crowdfunded games, and more related to board gaming for the past two weeks. At the end, I'll also be sharing what's going on behind the scenes with my YouTube channel, Meeple Mentor. So stick around, we've got a lot to cover. Leave me a like and comment on what kinds of updates that you want to hear more about to make sure that you don't miss my news updates, new video tutorials, and our podcast episodes. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube and your preferred streaming platform. Let's get started with some crowdfunding. First on GameFound is Storm Dragons, the Dragon Trappings expansion. The dragons of the Magdar Mountains have reluctantly begun to trade with the humans who live nearby. As a result, they are able to trade with them to obtain dragon trappings, stuff to wear to make you stronger, fiercer, and better in battle. In Storm Dragons, battle to gain tokens. The more tokens, the stronger you are. All these battles lead up to a challenge of your opponents. The player with the most dragon cards, one after proving your worth in a challenge, is crowned victorious. This game is for two to six players ages 14 and up and plays in 45 minutes. You can back it until February 28th. Prisoners is a deductive and strategic game with elements of cooperation based on a theme related to the prison industry. Prisoners versus the prison defense system. Two opposing camps fighting for completely different goals. Some for freedom, others for the prestige of the facility. Who will win this battle? Take sides and outsmart your opponent. This area control and survival game incorporates humor and deduction in its cooperative narrative. It's for two to four players ages 14 and up and plays in 120 minutes. It's funding on GameFound until March 10th. Bismarck Solitaire is the board game edition of the best-selling book game on Amazon, Bismarck Solitaire Book Game. It's a sea hunt game. As the German commander, you are hunting convoys and British warships. You are also hunted by the British Navy that outguns you and has every ship and aircraft it can muster looking for you. It is played by a crafty AI bot that is focused on only one thing, sink the Bismarck. The board game uses the same great game system as the book game, but has the traditional board game tactile components. It plays in less than an hour and is funding on Kickstarter until February 25th. Interested in engine building board game of deep sea exploration, resource management, and research? Deep Shelf is a relaunch by Ninth Haven Games for the aesthetically striking game from the designer of Dinogenics. It's for one to four players ages 14 and up and plays in 90 to 140 minutes. You can back it on Kickstarter until February 19th. Get crazy with a politically incorrect card game that will have you laughing out loud. Identity War is a fast-paced, strategy-based card game for two to six players. Players collect identity cards to complete sets while defending against accusations and stealing or swapping cards from their opponents. With five types of cards, including identity, accusation, privilege, social, credit, and wild cards, players must outwit their opponents to come out on top. The game is designed for players ages 14 and up and takes anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes to play. It's funding on Kickstarter until March 6th. The Adventures of Dex Dixon, the board game, is a scenario-based sandbox strategy game set in a multi-dimensional noir horror world filled with detectives and monster crime bosses. Choose your boss, recruit your thugs, assemble your gear, then charge your magical powers and become a paranormal detective. It's for one to four players ages 14 and up and plays in 30 minutes per player. You can back it on Kickstarter until March 5th. Next up is Stone Saga, a cooperative campaign style survival crafting board game set in a unique persistent world shaped by your choices. Generational storytelling, resource gathering, and exploration and discovery, plus behemoths to overcome. It's for ages 14 and up and plays in 60 to 120 minutes. It's suited for one to four players and features a 30 plus hour campaign mode. You can back it on Kickstarter until February 28th. Set a Watch, Forsaken Isles, and Doomed Run is funding on Kickstarter till the 24th. The final standalone expansion to the Set a Watch trilogy adds a new campaign run mode and more to the one to four player co-op game. Forsaken Isles is a standalone expansion featuring the same critically acclaimed gameplay with a new Doomed mechanic and a new short game mode. The expansion is fully compatible with the original game. Set a Watch Doomed Run is the culmination of the entire Set a Watch series into a replay 
playable campaign and big box storage solution. These games are for ages 13 and up and play in 60 to 90 minutes. Chomp, Sale, Couture, and Mindspace provide four small boxes, four big games, and four unique experiences. Chomp, each turn, you choose to take a point scoring goal card or a card to grow your dino inhabited land. Score points for feeding your dinosaurs and fulfilling your goal cards, but be careful not to let them eat each other. Couture, every turn, there are three simultaneous auctions. You can't win them all, but you can win the right ones. Compete to model different types of fashion, each with its own scoring criteria. Finally, mind space. How do you fit all that stuff in your head? How do you organize it in a fun and fulfilling way without it being stressful? The dice, much like life, are going to throw things at you, but you arrange your pursuits and priorities, or polyominoes, in your brain. You can back any or all of these four games on Kickstarter until March 2nd. Potions is a fantasy roll and write game in which you will have to create a magic potion to save the city before the curse catches you. Advancement of the antagonist or obtainment of resources is based on dice rolls. To complete the objective, you must win gold and acquire magic candles and lucky flowers. It's for ages 8 and up and is playable solo to 99 players. Playtime is 15 minutes and it's funding on Kickstarter until February 27th. A Kickstarter exclusive for Homeworld Fleet Command board game delivers a fast playing, rules light solo, co op, and PvP board game where players take control of massive fleets from the cult classic video game. In this one to four player game, learn as you play through a 10 part campaign, not all at once, unless you want to. Multiple copies of the game can also be combined to create fleet battles with hundreds of ships. You can back it on Kickstarter until March 5th. Organize your party to become the true king in Trick Takers Kings, a unique trick taking game from Japan. Create your hands with royalty that can activate a skill once per round or per game. Bid on the number of tricks you will take, then gain bonus points if you're correct. It's for two to five players and has a playtime of 30 to 40 minutes. It's funding on Kickstarter until March 1st. In the relaunch of Photographic World, take pictures of amazing animals while traveling the world. The set collection race is for one to five players. Fulfill commissions, take actions, and increase your fame as a world-renowned traveler. Photographic World also has a junior variant. It's funding on Kickstarter until February 28th. Rising Storm The Starborn is a sci-fi themed card game. Based on the Starborn stories by Patrick Thomas, in this game, points are earned by winning challenges, capturing enemy cards, and earning credits. This game features hand building and optional team play, with complex and multiple interactions between card powers. You can back it on Kickstarter until February 18th. Are you ready to test your architectural skills? Blueprints of Mad King Ludwig is a flip and sketch strategy game that entices you to puzzle out and draw the most extravagant blueprints for Ludwig's next castle. It's funding on Kickstarter until March 7th. In the new fast paced card game, Pick the Pug, you want the pug, you need the pug, lie for the pug, and if your friends have it, pick it. Play three rounds, each ending with a winner. Win two rounds to be champion or prepare for the tiebreaker. To win a round, you must only have the pug only. You will steal a card from other players, discard two monkeys, then check for the pug. It's for ages seven and up, three to eight players, and plays in 30 minutes. You can back it on Kickstarter until March 10th. Horror Game Show, The Board Game, is a board game about a brutal retro vibe TV show. Sign contracts, buy gear, hire players, prepare dirty tricks, and make your studio famous. It's for two to four players ages 16 and up, and plays in 90 to 120 minutes. It's funding on Kickstarter till February 28th. Zoo Tiles Fruits Basket is funding on Kickstarter till March 2nd. Take part in helping the Soma family break the curse in this tactical strategy tile game. Compose your team of various members of the Soma family who have been possessed by the Japanese Zodiac animals and take family rivalry to a whole new level. It's for two to four players ages 10 and up and plays in 25 to 50 minutes. The last day to fund Steve Jackson Games' Box of Astonishments on Kickstarter is today. It's a box of surprises overloaded with games, expansions, and accessories all pulled from their Austin warehouse. What could be in your box? Lastly on Kickstarter is Boba Master Card Game, in which you race others to create your favorite bubble tea. Boba Master is a very engaging card game and full of action, easy to pick up, and gets rowdy very quickly. Steal from your opponents, force them to make mistakes, stir up the game by swapping hands or even swapping bubble teas. 
What happens to others can quickly happen to you just as fast. You cannot avoid being a menace even if you try. Be the first to complete your bubble teas and become the Boba Master. It's funding until March 14th. Getting into the industry news, Hasbro and Renegade Game Studios have expanded their partnership by adding Acquire to their publishing catalog. Their version featuring an updated rulebook and a building named after the late designer Sid Saxon will be put out sometime this year. Julian Sharp, a 15-year veteran of the toy and consumer goods industry, has been appointed the new U.S. General Manager at Asmodee. Sharp will be responsible for managing the country's P&L, as well as Asmodee's management of U.S. distribution and overall performance. Impressions Game Distribution Services, which is now owned by Flat River Group, is facing the, con the consolidation of process, price list, and catalog. Founder Aldo Gozi has left impressions as of the end of January. Gyozi's departure has been long anticipated. The Trade Day Marketplace has been added to the Gen Con Trade Day event. This space will be used to accommodate distributors, manufacturers, and publishers selling and displaying games for retail stores, libraries, and classrooms. Trade Day will be held at the Con on Wednesday, August 2nd, the day before the Consumer Show opens. Beginning March 6th, prices for certain Games Workshop's products will increase. This is due to the rising costs of shipping and production. This is the second increase in price for Games Workshop in the last two years. An increase of about 6% is anticipated for their plastic miniatures, resin miniatures, and Citadel brushes and paints. Disney Lorcana D23 collector sets are making a big noise on eBay, with some having sold for over $10,000 in the last few months of 2022 into 2023. The sets contain favors and components only available at the Ravensburger booth at Disney Expo 2023 and in limited quantities. Holy Grail Games is closing its doors, and a post on Twitter from February 14th, the company states they will be ceasing all activities immediately. The explanation points to COVID shutdowns, which caused delays, container shortages, and increased expenses of all kinds. Being a French company, HGG's crowdfunding efforts were raised in euros, the value of which fell against the dollar between the second quarters of 21 and 2022. More information can be found on their website. In our last piece of news, February 1st, Funko Games announced its expansion into Australia and New Zealand with Let's Play Games and Big Wheel Toys as distribution partners. This is the latest step in Funko's attempts to grow into a worldwide presence that connects fans and families via immersive board game experiences. Next, let's look at newly announced games and expansions coming to retail. A trio of games based on Disney's animated characters have been revealed to be released this year by Ravensburger. Disney Villains, the card game, already available as a Barnes & Noble exclusive, challenges players to create a team of villains and henchmen, while curse cards allow them to interfere with other players. It's intended for ages 8 and up. Disney World Around is slated to be released in March and combines trivia and speed reading skills. Players need to use their knowledge of Disney characters to find answers and read them on a word wheel faster than the others. It's intended for ages 10 and up. Lastly is Disney's Around the World, in which players try to collect stamps for their passports as they travel to six different lands in hot air balloons. It's for ages 4 and up. A game which portrays the Chinese opium trade in the early to mid-1800s, an infamous traffic, has been announced to be revamped by Whirligig Games. They expect work on the second edition to take two years. If you're looking for one of the best alternatives to Monopoly, a planned updated edition for Acquire is slated for a worldwide release later in 2023. As a far more tactical and deliberate experience than Monopoly, Acquire features strategic tile-laying rules and careful investment choices. A new version of Dixit features themes and characters from Disney and Pixar films. Lillibud will release a new edition of the game called Dixit Disney, launching first in Barnes & Noble as part of its First to Market program in the fall of 2023. It's a game of guesswork, storytelling, interpretation, and is compatible with past and future Dixit games and expansions. Dixit is for 3-6 to six players ages 8 and up and plays in 30 minutes. Skybound has announced the release of three new games. Wine Night is a party game about complaining. Draw a prompt card and each player whines about the subject at hand and vote to award votes to the player who whines the best. 
It's intended for two to eight players ages 14 and up and is slated to release on March 22nd. Boo Tea Call is intended for a more mature audience and combines seduction and social deduction, putting players in a seance that finds them trying to identify which hot ghost is looking for a hookup. It's designed for three to eight players ages 17 and up and plays in 20 minutes, slated to release on April 19th. No Context asks players to find connections between random pieces of comic artwork. Players try to guide each other to correctly guess their cards while at the same time trying to guess their opponent's cards faster than the others. It's for two to six players ages 13 and up and plays in about half an hour. Slated for release on May 31st. Steamforged Games will release Gears of War the card game based on the popular video game series into US retail April 10th. In this one-on-one -on -one card game, players build a deck and go to battle as either the COG forces or the Locust Horde. The game takes place across multiple chapters where the results of each chapter influence what comes next. This game is for two players ages 14 and up and plays in 30 to 60 minutes. Renegade Game Studios revealed two new G.I. Joe expansions, one for the board game and one for the deck building game, which are now on pre-order. G.I. Joe Mission Critical Chaos Break expansion features the Dreadlocks and Cobra Boss Zartane. It also adds two new Joe heroes and two new lieutenants to the mix. The two heroes added are Beachhead and Ripcord, and the two lieutenants are Zarana and Roadpig. G.I. Joe deck building game New Alliances is a Transformers crossover expansion where the Joes team up with the Autobots to take down Cobra and the Decepticons. Players can take advantage of the Autobots' different modes to complete missions and add some robot power to their teams. Renegade Studios also revealed Justice and Mercy, an expansion for Vampire the Masquerade Rivals. It adds new clans to the deck builder, sorcerers who serve as judges and lawbringers and healers. Another announcement by Renegade is in an expansion for My Little Pony Adventures in Equestria called Princess Pageantry. It's slated for release in March and brings with it new characters and mechanics, along with new locations for players to work their way through. It's intended, along with the core set, for one to four players ages 14 and up and plays in 75 minutes. Lastly, in Renegade Game Studios news, they announced they are bringing back another classic as Axis and Allies 1914. It will return with an updated look with the updated version hoping to be the first in a series of classic Axis and Allies games. More information will be provided as the pre-order is set to deb debut in August. Ares Games revealed Quartermaster General Eastfront, a new two-player strategy game for release into retail in August. This two-player Quartermaster General game is an in-depth, card-driven simulation battle between the Soviet Union and Germany during World, World War II. The game is played over the course of 16 rounds, representing the events that happened within this theater from summer 1941 to spring 1945. Fireside Games will release Castle Panic 2E, The Dark Titan, an expansion, into retail February 22nd. This expansion adds Agnarok and his minions to the games of Castle Panic 2E. This 8-point final boss monster has an army with new powers to challenge the players. The players can fight back against this fiend with Boiling Oil, the Cavalier, and support tokens. The expansion with the base set supports 1-6 to six players ages 8 and up and plays in 60 minutes. Aliens, Another Glorious Day in the Core, will be released back into stores by Gale Force 9 in June. The game was first released in Q3 2020 during the heights of the COVID crisis. The new print will be run in multiple languages as well. Fans of Pandemic can find happiness in the knowledge that Matt Leacock has made another co-op board game. Forbidden Jungle is the fourth entry in the Forbidden series and features the same game mechanics such as tile manipulation and the urgent need to escape a dangerous location. A release date has yet to be announced. In 1930, the golden age of airlines, players assume the roles of aviation investors, promoters, and presidents that are looking to make their fortunes. They build up wealth by acquiring stock tokens in the 10 airlines featured in the game. It's for 2-6 to six players, plays in 90-120 to 120 minutes, and will be coming soon to retail according to Rio Grande Games. Harness the resources of the land and recruit survivors to help build factories and revive a game set for release into retail on March 17th by Asmodee. The primary goal is to reach and populate ancient sites to reclaim technologies long forgotten. 
It's intended for one to four players ages 14 and up and plays in two hours. Gibberers is an expert word game akin to field linguistics. In the game, players become primitive humans who meet aliens and create a new language that allows them to communicate. As the vocabulary grows and generations pass, the new language evolves like a tech tree. Gibberers includes short rules that allow for a 60 minute game and full expert rules that generate a 180 minute experience, not like any other word game. Hobby Japan also plans to release a trilogy of titles from designer Susumu Kawasaki, two of them being new editions of previously released games, R Echo and Mes Master of Rules, and the third, Builders High, being new. In R Echo, your hand is a dump truck loaded with recyclable material. On a turn, you drop off material at a matching recycling fa facility, like glass, paper, steel, and plastic, then pick up unsorted waste from that facility. If you have more than five items in hand, you must dump them illegally, which costs you points. When you make a facility hit its trash quota, you take a scoring token from that facility. At game's end, you score for a facility only if you have at least two tokens from it. Lastly, from Hobby Japan, Master of Rules is for three to five players, and each player has a hand that contains number cards and rule cards. In a round, each player in order plays either a number or rule to the table. Then they in order play the type of card they didn't play the first time. You can't repeat a rule played by another unless you have no other options in hand. If your rule was satisfied by the cards played, then score it. Hand management and card budgeting are key in this game. In Terra Pyramids from publisher Korea Board Games, players compete to acquire building sites in order to build pyramids in a variety of sizes. They will need money, resources, and workers to build the most glorious pyramids, for which they will be rewarded points. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. The game ends after all tile stacks have been exhausted. Each pyramid is worth points depending on the level that a player has occupied the pyramid. Leftover resources and money are also worth points. Also by Korea Board Games, complete customer orders to increase your ratings and be recognized as the best barista in Coffee Rush. Fulfill orders to grant upgrades that allow you to gain ingredients more quickly. The player with the highest rating wins. Get On Board, Paris and Roma is a standalone sequel to Sashi's Get On Board, New York and London from 2022, which was itself a new version of 2018's Let's Make a Bus Route. Over multiple rounds in Get On Board, Paris and Roma, you reveal a new route card, then plot the ideal route to cross off the best passenger and place spaces. Complete your objectives and try to get the most points. Let's talk for a bit about what's happening on the Meeple Mentor YouTube channel. First, did you know that we have a Patreon page? It's available for fans of the podcast and channel to pledge as a patron and support us here. There's various pledge levels for small monthly support that helps grow the channel's content. You can get access to new content early, you'll get to vote on new game tutorials that come out on the channel, and more. Head to Patreon at patreon.com slash MeepleMentor. The most recent video tutorial that I published on the channel was for American Psycho, a killer game, a trick-taking game based on the classic horror movie American Psycho. If you like the movie and you like trick-taking card games, you're definitely going to want to check it out. Holly and I uploaded our review for Lowlands from Z-Man Games. It's a really fun Euro game about raising sheep and collectively building a dike to stop the water from flooding the valley. Yesterday I did an unboxing video on the latest edition of Alien Frontiers known as Edition X. It's a re-release of the 2010 game that includes several of the expansions altogether. Watch the full unboxing video to see all the components and their quality. Lastly, the latest off-the-shelf recommendation video I released was for the amazing Terraforming Mars. The off-the-shelf series is of course to help recommend board games to both hobby gamers and new gamers alike. Upcoming tutorials include Obsession, First Rat, and Carnegie. Stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to today's news update. I appreciate your support, and remember, teach when you can, but always be learning. See you next time.